today we're looking at applications of systems of linear equations. So some problems that we have to figure out and we will end up with uh, two equations and two unknowns that we'll need to solve in order to solve the application. So um, kind of some steps here to, to help you with these types of questions. You want to um, have, we call them let statements, so a definition of the unknowns that you're dealing with. Um, read obviously the problem carefully, translate into a system of equations using those unknowns. Solve the system algebraically, unless it says that you can solve it graphically, uh, and then write a sentence solution to verify. Okay, so let's take a look at the first one. It says determine the value of x and y. So not really a whole lot of words here. It's more of a, uh, a problem with that applies in a different context, right? So uh, angle properties here. We've got two intersecting lines. And so we have to remember our angle properties. So a couple of things. Obviously, um, you could, if you try to make this angle equal to this one, because they are equal, you're going to get two equations, uh, sorry, one equation and two unknowns. That's not really going to help you very much because there's nothing to compare to. But what you do know is this angle here and this one add to 180 and this angle here and this one add to 180. So then you would have two equations and two unknowns, right? So this one's 100 uh, as well because it's opposite this one. Uh, so we're going to let, in this case, um, really the, there aren't really, there isn't really a let statement because uh, x and y are just part of this angle. So you could say, uh, let something like that, right? Um, really, this diagram is kind of in place of your let statement. So then we're going to use, uh, basically, these are supplementary angles. Okay, so uh, 100 plus 5x plus y equals 180. Okay, so what actually I might do is leave the degree symbol off and then at the end when I find x and y, put it back in. So this would be 5x plus y equals 80. Then the other is 3y minus x plus 100 equals 180. So then uh, I'm going to rearrange these, so negative x plus 3y equals 80. Um, I'm just putting them in the same order so it's easier to solve. So I could either multiply this one by 5 to eliminate x or this one by 3 to eliminate x. I think I'm going to multiply this one by 5. So I'm going to switch to a different color. Okay, and this is my equation 1. This is my equation 2. Um, go back to blue. So I'll set these up. So that's 5x plus y equals 80. That's 1. And then negative 5x plus 15y equals 400. So I'm going to add these together because the coefficients are opposite in sign. So that's 0. Then I get 16y equals 480. Divide by, oops, divide by 16. What is that? 30. Okay, so y is 30 degrees. So now I put the degree symbol in. Then substitute in to get x. So it doesn't matter which. I'm going to substitute into the first equation. So 5x plus 30 equals 80, so 5x equals 50, so x equals 10 degrees. Okay, 
So um, then I just summarize. Because these have units, I'm going to just show them uh, together like that, not in an ordered pair. Um, if it asks, actually asks you what this angle is, you already know it's 80 because of, of adding to 180. So um, probably you wouldn't be asked to do that. But you can check, like verify in your head. So 5 times 10 is 50 plus 30 is 80. So you know that works. 3 times y, so 3 times 30 is 90 minus 10 is 80. So do a quick verification for sure. Okay, next one it says five burgers and three shakes cost $25.50, but three burgers and two shakes cost $15.75. Determine the price of four burgers and one shake. I think these, these are pretty cheap <laughs> burgers and shakes compared to these days, but uh, in any case, we're going to figure it out. So we do need a let statement here. So it, what are we looking for? The price... Um, of four burgers and one shake. So in this case, because there's no four burgers and one shake here, I want to find the price of one of each. So let X be the price of a bur burger. Let Y be the price of a shake. Sometimes students are a little bit lazy. They say, let x equal burger. Okay, well, is x a burger? Or is x the number of burgers? Or is x the cost of the burger? So just x equals burger isn't great. Be a little bit more precise in what you're looking for. Okay, so it says five burgers so uh, and three shakes cost. So we're finding the cost. So five times, so the price or cost, right? Five times X and means plus three times Y equals $25.50. And then three X plus two Y equals $15.75. So that's your equation one and your equation two. So this is an example of where we can't just multiply one equation by a number to get the coefficients to be the same. So I'm going to change to green here. So what do you want to do? Well, you can multiply this by 3, this by 5. You can multiply this by 2, this by 3. Doesn't really matter. I think maybe I'll eliminate y's for this one. So that by 2 and that by 3. Now, what you could also do is multiply by negative 3, so then you're adding, right? You're getting opposite signs. Again, up to you. All right, so if I do that, that's going to be 10x plus 6y equals uh, 51. This is going to be negative 9x minus 6y equals negative, what's that going to be? Uh, 45, uh, 46, 50, 47, 25. Let me just check with that. So 15, 75 times 3, 47, 25. Okay, so now we're going to add those together. So those go to zero, so that's going to be x equals, uh, subtract these, that's 275, 375. Okay, so I guess that's, that's probably a 375 for a burger, like McDonald's, it's, it's cheaper than that for your regular burger. I only ever go to McDonald's for fast food, so, um, but I'm sure a, quarter pounder is more than that. I'm not really sure. <laughs> anyway, it's close. Uh, now we want to substitute. I'm going to put it into the first one to get the y value. So 5 times 375 
plus 3y equals 2550. Um, so uh, 5 times 375 is 1875. And then 2550, subtract that. 675. I think this is what's a little too cheap. Although maybe on dollar drink days it's cheaper. Uh, two twenty-five. Oops. I uh, wanted to just fix that. Okay. So I didn't put dollar symbols in my equations. Now I'm going to make a statement, and it also so I know um, it says determine the price of four burgers and one shake. So uh, four. So we still have to do some work. Four burgers plus one shake, what is that going to be? So 4 times 375 is $15. It's 225 equals 1725. So therefore, the cost of four burgers and one shake is seventeen twenty-five. All right. So that one you had to. Uh, that was a kind of a a cost question, given two scenarios uh, with the costs for both scenarios, and then you had to solve the system. Next one's an investment type question. So it says Sam invests $8,000, part at 5% and the remainder at 4%. After one year, Sam earned $174 more dollars uh, on the 5% than he did on the 4%. Determine how much Sam invested at each rate. This tells you what your let statements are going to be. So we're going to have to let X be the amount invested and we'll do at 5% and let y be amount invested at 4%. So remember um, how to calculate interest. So your interest earned is your principal multiplied by the rate of interest times the time. So this is all in one year, so that means the time is one year. And so we don't know what the principal is. It's either X or Y goes in here, and the rate is either 5% uh, or 4%, okay? As a decimal, that's either 0 0.05 or 0 0.04, okay? We don't just use percents in our equation. Actually use the decimal that you would mul multiply by. So here are the two situations. He invested $8,000, part at five and part at four. So $8,000 is equal to X plus Y, right? The amount that he invested at five, amount he invested at four equals 8,000. Then he earned $175 more on the 5% investment than he did on the 4%. So um, if we take the 4% investment, that's 0 0.04 times Y, okay? And now we have to add 175 to that to get the 0 0.05 investment. So think about it, earned 175 more on the 5%. So this is a bigger number. This is smaller. So that's why you have to add the 175 to the smaller number to get the bigger. Sometimes students get that mixed around. I tend to use elimination, um, but certainly substitution. Maybe you want to solve for X or Y here and substitute it in. If I'm using elimination, 
I actually want to multiply through by 100 here uh, because to get rid of the decimals. That's just what I do, but actually substitution is probably a little bit faster. But I'm just going to show you this because this is a technique that might be helpful for other questions. So when I do that, I get 4y. Um, oh, actually, I'm going to bring everything to one side. I'm going to bring it to the right. So I'm going to have 17,500 equals uh, 5x minus 4y. Okay, so this is equation 2. Equation 1, remember, is 800 equals x plus y. So now I'd want to multiply that by either 5 or 4. I would actually multiply by 4. So I'm going to do that right here. Oops. Because then I can eliminate right away. So uh, 4 times 800 is Oh, sorry, 8,000 is 32,000, 4x plus 4y. And we're going to add those together. So we'll get 49,500 equals 9x, because those go to 0. Divide that by 9, and we get x is 5,500. Then substitute that back into, I'll put it into the first equation. So then that's 8,000 equals 5,500 plus y. So subtract 8,000, so take 8,000, subtract 5,500, and you get 2,500. So then a statement answer. Um, uh, let's see, it's Sam, right? So Sam invested uh, 5,500 at 5% and 2,500 at 4%. Okay. This is a mixture type question. So it says 60% of sulfuric acid solution will be mixed with 90% sulfuric acid solution. So when we call it a percent solution, it means 60% of it is pure sulfuric acid. It's a solution, um, so 60% of it is pure, 90% is pure. Determine how much of each type of solution is required to produce 2,700 mils of a 70% solution. So obviously you know it's, it's a, bit, a bit of both. If this was halfway in between, so say I was looking for um, a 75% solution, then it would be half and half, right? That's just logic. But it's not. It's a little bit uh, less than half and half, or half of that. So if you think of a 60% and a 90%, we're only wanting a 70 so we want less 90% than 60%. In any case, or that statements, let x be the amount of 60% solution. Let y be the amount of 90% solution. Okay, so 60% uh, is pure, right? Um, in any case, actually, first equation, I start with this. That's your total amount of both solutions together. So that means x plus y has to equal 2700. Now, 60% uh, of x is pure sulfuric acid. So 0 0.6 times x is pure. 0 0.9 of y is pure. And we want that to be 0 0.7 times the total amount in there, right? So 70% of the total solution is pure. So please make sure, don't forget about multiplying by the volume of that solution, how much there is, because this is a, a 
number of milliliters. This is a number of milliliters. So this needs to be a number of milliliters. Um, so this here, 2700 times 0 0.7. is 1890 okay now again with this you could so, uh, solve for x or y and substitute it in I tend to use elimination so I'm going to multiply this by 10 to get rid of the decimals okay so what's that going to be it's going to be 6x plus 9y equals 18,900. So now um, I might be able to divide by 3, but I'll just leave it like that for now. And then I'll multiply this, how about by 6? Oops. Okay, so that's going to be 6x plus 6y equals, what's that, uh, 2,700 times six just make sure so I don't mess up sixteen thousand two hundred okay and then I'm going to subtract those to get eliminate the x so that's going to give me negative three y equals and then I've already got the sixteen thousand two hundred so subtract eighteen thousand nine hundred and that's negative 2700 and then I'm going to divide by 3 so y is going to be 900 okay and substitute in I'm going to put it into the first equation because it's easiest right so y plus 900 equals 2700 so x equals uh, 1800 milliliters so this is one that you may have reasoned out without uh, equations, but if this is on a test, a written response, you have to use systems. So use your reasoning to check your work, um, but then show it algebraically. So therefore, um, is this a person? No. Um, Therefore, uh, 1,800 milliliters of 60% solution and 900 milliliters of 90% solution are required to make 2,700 milliliters of 70% solution, okay? And then a distance, speed, and time question. So it says a riverboat took two hours to travel 24 kilometers down a river with the current and three hours to make the return trip against the current. Determine the speed of the boat in still water and the speed in the current. We've actually done distance, speed, and time questions. Now this is given us, giving us sort of an extra method. We did them with rationals, but now we know we can do them with two equations, right? So I'll just do a quick chart here. Okay. Expand this out just a little bit. Okay, so um, so this would be our distance, speed, and time. Okay, remember, equals speed, distance equals speed times time. So it says it took uh, two hours to travel 24 kilometers down a river with the current and three hours to make the return trip against the current. Determine the speed of the boat in still water and the speed of the current. So our unknowns are going to be in both of these. So this is downstream and upstream. Okay. Um, these are what our variables are. So we're going to let x be speed 
in still water and let y be speed of current. Okay, so the distance it, downstream and upstream isn't going to change, right? Time, two hours downstream, three hours upstream. Okay, so now this is where our unknown has to be. Okay, um, so a little bit different from rational equations where we had only one unknown and then we had an empty column that we used this formula to fill in. Okay, and then we related that. In this case, we're going to have our unknowns in here and each line will be an equation. So speed downstream. Think about if you've ever uh, been in a boat, um, when you or even just walking in the wind, or if you're swimming in a in the river, um, or just standing in the river. If the if you're going downstream, that means the current is helping you move faster than you actually do. So your your speed that you would normally make in still water, it's increased by the speed of the current. So you're going faster. This is a bigger number. Upstream, it goes against you. So you're subtracting. Okay. So now our two equations are 24 equals x plus y times 2. So I'll just show it with the 2 in front. And then 24 equals 3 times x minus y. So can't eliminate yet because I, these are in brackets. So, oops. So I'm going to expand these out, so down here, so that's going to be 24. Uh, now what you could do actually is divide by 2 and divide by 3. Okay, so you could go like this, equals 2x plus 2y, and then 24 equals 3x minus 3y, and then um, use elimination, or you could divide by 2, so that would be 12 equals x plus y, and then 8 equals x minus y. So take a look at these. Which do you think would be easier? Well, if we divide right away, now we can add these equations to eliminate y. So this one's a bit faster, okay? Maybe if this would be a number like 5 that doesn't go into that. The 2 might, so we could divide it, and the 5 we would expand out, okay? But um, this is a little bit easier. We're adding the equations, so the, oops, we're adding the equations, so that's going to be 20 equals 2x, so x equals 10, and then substitute that in to equation 1. So that'll be 12 equals 10 plus y, so y equals 2. Okay, so therefore the, the speed in still water is 10, and this was uh, just check, but it, it is kilometers and hours, so kilometer per hour, and the speed of the current, current is usually the smaller one, is two kilometers per hour. Okay, all right, another uh, distance, speed, and time. So let me do a quick chart here. Alright, so it says Nicole drove 500 kilometers from Edmonton to Lethbridge in five and a half hours. She do drove part of the way at 100 and the rest at 80. Determine how far Nicole drove at each speed. So this would be part one, part two. This is distance, speed, and time. Uh, so determine how far Nicole drove at each speed. So this would be our, could be our x. Okay, and this R Y. 
Okay, so we don't know. Um, what each part is. We know the total driven is 500. We know the total time is five and a half hours. Okay. Um, and we know the speeds here. Part of the way uh, at 100, the rest at 80. Okay. And so now um, you want to, we can Think about what time is. Time is distance divided by speed. So this would be x over 100. This would be y over 80. Okay, so now this is one equation and this is one equation. Okay, so now um, I'll just do my let statements. If you do have a, t a chart like this with everything labeled in it, then you can get away without a let statement. Okay, but I will do this anyway. So let x be a distance traveling, traveled um, when going 100 kilometers per hour. Let y be distance traveled when going 80 kilometers per hour. Okay, so now our equations are x plus y equals 500 and x over 100 plus x, uh, sorry, y over 80 equals five and a half, which is what 10, 11 over two, since we're using fractions there. So now what I would do in this case is multiply through by something that will get rid of the fractions. So lowest common denominator of 800, uh, sorry, 180 and two. So 800 would work, even less than that actually. Um, how about 400, let's do 400, probably less than that, and I'm not thinking straight. Um, so if I do that, I end up getting 4x plus 5y equals uh, 200 times 11, so 2200. Nope, that's 400 was good. Now here, if I want to eliminate something, maybe I'll eliminate um, the y this time. So I'll multiply through by 5. So that's going to be 5x plus 5y equals 2500. And so if I subtract, the y's go away. And so I get just 1x equals 300. Okay, so then it's pretty straightforward. Substitute that into the first equation. So that'll be 300 plus y equals 500. So y equals 200. And this was Nicole. So Nicole drove 300 kilometers at 100 kilometers per hour and 200 kilometers at 80 kilometers per hour. Okay, so uh, always make sure you have your units, okay, in your final statement. Okay, so that gives you a good overview of the common types of word problems. Okay, um, a sort of a, a pricing problem. This many of this, this many of this, how much is each, each worth? Um, uh, mixture problem, so that investment and the solutions and then uh, distance, speed, and time. Okay, so we're done.